started sanding back this spot and I thought I'd share this with you before it carried on. Uh, I got 180 on a dual density block and I started sanding it down and then I thought, well, I really need to show you this. Um, and that's, I can see the repair uh, scratches from the 80 grit there and down in there. And if I keep sanding uh, much further, I'll actually be down into my repair area. Now you can see it looks like a little bit jagged line here, but it looks really nice here. So it only needs a little tiny, tiny bit more crisscross sanding. And you can see it's coming up. There's still a little bit of filler on there, just like that. And I'd say that's done. I call that done. Um, there's filler in the repair. You can see the filler in the repair. There's a tiny little bit around the edge, this little halo. That's it. It's done. If you go any further, you're going to start digging a hole like this. And especially if this was metal and you had this situation and you kept sanding that down, it's like, oh, well, there's my repair and there's my repair. You've gone too far. Um, the sandpaper will dig the filler out of the hole and not have hardly any effect on the sheet metal. And then you'll have a depression again to fill. So be very careful when you're sanding down your filler. Just sand it back until you see that little halo. Because you're going to put primer. I'm going to put primer, 2K primer, probably two, three good coats over this whole thing. And once I guide coat it and I block it all down, this tiniest little nothing here will disappear uh, into the block down area uh, with the film thickness of the 2K, uh, the 2K primer. So anyway, I'm going to carry on, knock all these spots down. And you can see hit all the uh, fine filler spots with the 1-8 carry on now and hit all these uh, little spots of red glaze I think they're dry now and get them all knocked off that'll pretty much be it for today alright guys got a little carried away uh, Little carried away on the sanding by the time I'd done all them little spots and stuff wasn't much left so hit the whole surface with 180 uh, gonna wheel it out in the driveway on the little dolly it's under there and and wash it with a hose and then when I get back at it I'll I'll go to the supply store grab some grab some 220 give it one last little go over got to get all these edges of course and then uh, yeah be primer time because there's not much uh, there's not much more else I can do here hey guys took it out for a wash I pretty much said I was calling it quits for the day what a little dealer sticker was here it's really pissing me off I decided I'd uh, since I was scuffing it all the uh, perimeter down with scotch bread, I thought, oh, I'll get some lacquer thinners out and get that glue off of there and with scotch bread. Well, yeah, I did. And it uh, it raised all the base coat up around here. So I had to let it dry and I had to sand it back. So, word of caution. Got exposed base coat. Don't put lacquer thinners on it. Blew all that down with compressed air and a clean cloth. Now uh, ready to put uh, wax and grease remover and another clean cloth. And I have an uh, old tack rag in a Ziploc uh, zip up sandwich bag. That's where I keep mine and there's no point in getting a good one out for a primer job. So he's good in there. So basically, just like this, I have it in a pump squirt bottle, squirt some on, 
and wipe it off just like that it's pretty hot in here you can see how fast that just flashed off it's so hot in this garage okay sorry everything's backlit but uh, I'm ready to go uh, I'm gonna blow this off with the air from the gun with the used tack rag and then uh, shoot the primer now the spots where the clears cut through I'm just gonna go gonna go over them once and uh, first and then come back and get everything two coats now I'm not gonna do along the bottom I don't know if you guys can see that in the thing uh, along the bottom of here uh, with this primer uh, that's an unseen area that's behind the cab um, so right before paint uh, I'll spray sealer on there and then hit it Apply the first coat to the areas that I had to sand back the clear. So that was here, over there, on that corner, and on this corner. Uh, let that sit for a bit, and then I applied one full coat uh, to everything, and then a second uh, second full coat. And you can see there's some darker areas where the spray is a little drier. And some brighter areas where you know, I was just unloading the gun because you know you don't want to waste it. You mixed it, use it. So I rehit for a fourth time the uh, the areas where um, I had to sand back the clear coat. So there's some really nice, uh, really nice wet areas here and some really uh, dark dry areas. But it's all good. It's all good. It's just a primer coat, and that's all the whole point of a primer coat. You know. Get it on there. Get everything all covered up. Give yourself something to sand into so that everything comes out nice and flat. So, yeah, the little uh, little cosmic gun over there doesn't have exactly a huge fan on him. And even though he's running wide open, uh, I was trying to go faster than it was letting me. So, if, uh, if I was just going to put sealer on this, I'd be pulling a bigger gun out of the cupboard to, uh, to do that with, like maybe the A&I F-160 per se. But anyway, I got a little something else to share with you. Um, go, uh, since all this COVID uh, thing going on, getting materials is, of course, for everybody getting a little harder. Uh, I love this, uh, this primer here, this Dominion Sure Seal. Uh, ultra primer uh, thing is they got the primer in but they didn't get any activator in and so I took a shot in the dark I had better part of a quart of a euro from Evercoat and it seemed to be able to set this off but it uh, seems to like want to set it off twice as fast as it's supposed to so I've been adding reducer to it trying to get the pot to last a little longer it's working for me been doing using this on the last few jobs okay 
So I don't remember if I mentioned this primer, primer cures in like an hour and a half ready to sand. Uh, so I left this overnight in the garage. Uh, yeah, it's good and hard. Now the thing is working in your garage. What else is in the garage? Spiders. Uh, the spiders have dropped uh, these little uh, dead bodies, these little presents on uh, the surface of uh, of the cover. So I have to just dust them off with some air, and then I'm gonna shoot down the guide coat. Okay, so just using some good old flat black aerosol paint. It's nothing fancy, but you want a flat black, not a gloss black. Uh, the gloss has that little bit of urethane and it clogs up sandpaper a little too quick uh, Yeah Cheapest thing you can find in flat black. This is what I particularly got as a rust-oleum uh, See it on sale on discount anywhere anywhere at all, you know, just pick it up dollar store or wherever uh, yeah, just throw a little mist coat on there and uh, So you have something to follow as you're uh, sanding back uh, sanding back your piece Okay, it all pulled outside. Uh, you guys can see these or not. There's a little little spot there. There's another little spot over here. Uh, gonna go around before I get sanding. Uh, just put a little dab of this uh, blazing putty in those spots uh, before uh, before I get started. Uh, just kind of kills you know two birds with one stone you, just, you know sand it down and then come back and do this and then sand it again well just put a little dab in each of these little spots like that 